first of all, I apologize if I'm a little all over the place in this video. I didn't get home until 2 a.m. Um, I was on vacation and um, I was on the West Coast and I live on the East Coast. So with the time change and the difference in time and not getting home until 2 a.m., my, my brain isn't firing on all cylinders today. So I wanted to respond to Cheryl's question about the template and what the best way is to add pages for the front matter and, and work with the built-in table of contents. So I wanted to give a quick overview on the template. Now I'm showing you the template. This is the new template that will be available April 1st on my website. Um, it's not too different from the one I provided for free. Um, the differences are that I've included a checklist, um, kind of like a step-by-step -step checklist. I've added a couple of paragraph styles, including uh, paragraph styles for texts. And then I have, I think I will be adding a few, um, I'll be making a couple of tweaks to the master pages. And um, I added an additional text frame on this template, which I'll get into in, a, in, a, in just a little bit. All right, so the, the template as it is right now is basically four individual text frames. All right, so if you look at an InDesign document as a collection of documents and a, each collection is a individual text frame, that's how you should look at it. And when I build my books, my front matter is usually in a text frame. Then I have a separate text frame for my table of contents because the table of contents feature in InDesign has to work has to be a separate text frame. So it can't be in the front matter text frame. It has to be its own individual text frame. And then I have the main. So here is the front matter text frame. And right now in the template, the only thing that is there is the book title as well as the copyright. And then we have the table of contents text frame. And then we have the main text frame that you would place your manuscript into that starts on page one. For the new template, I also added a text frame after page one where you can place your back matter in. Now, I did this because I am offering my clients um, one, of, one of the issues a lot of people have with using InDesign formatters is that they have to go back to their formatter anytime they need updates to the back matter. So I am trying to offer a method that will allow clients to come back and update their back matter. And by including the back matter in a separate text frame, it will be easier for me to export the back matter as a Google Docs and then um, they can update it from the Google Docs. And I have the, I have uh, done a little overview of it before, but I, I purchased DocsFlow, which allows a link to a Google Docs and that someone can go update the Google Docs and then you can re-import that file into the, it, it actually works as a graphic like a graphic, so it will be linked here. So anytime that Google Docs file is updated, you can update the file here. Now you'll have, you probably will have to do some cleanup to the format, but it will work great where your clients will have the ability to update their back matter and you'll just need to make a few tweaks. So it's something that you could offer like, like a, you know, $15 for a new uh, print ready PDF based on their updated back matter. So that is why in the new template, I have included a text frame just for the back matter um, because that's how I have started doing my own personal documents. All right, so now back to the template. Um, some highlights to note, this, this right here is book title, um, subtitle and author name. And sometimes I will move this to the side. 
I won't ever delete it, but I move it to the side because I may want to place a title um, based on how it was designed on the book cover. So I may want to include like a title PNG. And then I will just place that. And then I will add the author name just on this page. And a lot of times I will um, have, uh, I will set this as, for the ebook, I will set this as one graphic. So let me just quickly set that to something different. Let's go with white. All right, so here is like a, a title page, and then I would keep this title page only for Uh, for the text variables. Maggie. All right, so our text variables are set up based on book title and author and subtitle. So if we had a subtitle, I'm just going to call this Once Upon Series, will be our subtitle. All that information is a text variable that automatically gets put into. Um, puts on the copyright page as well as our page headers for the manuscript all right which i'll get into in a minute um, so you never want to delete out this page because of those text variables but you can so you would need to move it aside all right now let's say you wanted a signature page all right and if you don't know what a signature page is it's just basically uh, the first page of a book that maybe includes the title of the book and the title only. And it may be small. Um, it's usually about 50% of what it is on the actual title page. So I'm gonna insert just to show you how to do it um, because it would need to go before the title page. So you would just go to the pages panel, go to be on that FM1, the first page of the document, right click go to insert pages you want to insert a page before and you want it to be probably the f title no warner page number master click on ok and then what we can do and yeah the pages are all misaligned right now but that's okay we'll fix that and then we're going to reduce this by 50 percent and place it centered and so this is now our half title page. And why is it called a half title page or signature page? It's basically a page that would allow the author plenty of white space to sign or leave a note for a reader if they were giving away a signed paperback or they were doing a signing at a bookstore or a convention. So they would have plenty of room to sign this signature page instead of trying to fit their signature on a title page. All right, so now our pages are misaligned. Our title page is over here and it needs to be here. Our copyright page isn't on the right side. So we actually, since we added one page, we actually need to add another page. So I'm going to be on that FMI page again. I'm gonna insert page. This time we're gonna insert a page after FMI and we just want it to be a blank page. All right, so now everything lines up. Here is our title page. Here is our copyright page. But where did the, the data for the uh, title page go? Well, it got moved down here. Not a big deal. You can easily move it back up. Um, and, and in some cases, it will actually, sometimes it will pop up onto its own page. You'll just need to move it out and you may delete, need to delete a page or two, all right? So that kind of goes with the copyright page too. Um, if, if it somehow gets misaligned, not a big deal. Um, it's only set to a C master page. And I have a text frame option where it, the vertical, vertical justification is set to align bottom. So if for some reason it gets misaligned and uh, all you have to do wherever it winds up, just assign a C master, 
then right click and do text frame options and align it to the bottom. All right, so let's say you want to add additional pages to the front matter. There's a couple of ways you can do this. Uh, you can come to the very end. This is how I do it. You can come to the very end of the copyright page, hit the enter key on the number pad, or you can go to type, insert break character, insert page break. Now, when you first do that, it may look like it didn't do anything, but there is actually a page break if we zoom in. There is actually a page break here, and we can tell by that little character there, okay? So if we come to the end of that and just start typing, it will add, finally add that new page so you can show. So that's just a little, I don't know if it's a bug or if it is um, just the way InDesign designed it. Um, that extra page will not show up until you start typing typing, or until you place something. All right, so let's say here is our dedication page that we added. We want this to be another title. Um, I need to assign a master page to it. And I want it to be the F title, no ornament, no page number. So it drops it down. And then we add our dedication to Mickey Mouse, okay? Now, typically I do not have another title and dedication, but for the purpose of the table of contents that I'm gonna show you in just a little bit, I am going to keep it. So the same thing, and I know I probably spelled this wrong, acknowledgements, we wanna set that to other title. Acknowledgements. Um, and then we will blah, blah, blah. We'll insert actually layout type fill placeholder text, okay? And we will just copy this. I'm just showing you for purposes how the text frames work. So it will add an additional page. And these are set, these other title pages are set to always begin on the right-hand side. So that's why I added a blank page here. Um, and then it added an additional page here and we would just assign the A header. And so our text variables bring in those um, titles. So you would just need to go in to update that. We always want an author name on the left-hand side and the book title on the right-hand side for a fiction book. So now that is reflected on our <clears throat> header. All right, so that is how you can add front matter in. You can also, and, and this will stay in one continuous text frame with the title page, all right? So this is all one linked text frame. Now let's say you had information and typically dedication and acknowledgements may not go in the table of contents, all right? So let's say you had information that you want added that will be in the table of contents and you want it to be after the table of contents, what you could do is the text frame for table of contents is on this page by itself. Um, there may be a blank page in some cases, but it will all be on a right-hand side and you can tell this text frame ends here. So what we can do is we could go in, we can add another page after a table of contents and we can insert that other front matter, like maybe a note to the reader. We'll set that to other titles. So it'll push itself to a right-hand page. And then let's say we maybe have a note from the editor. We set that to other titles and we'll push to an, the next right-hand page. And then lastly, let's say we have a forward. We'll set that to other titles and it will push to the next page. So this is all the table of contents, all the other titles that we want in the table of contents. And then I would place the text frame here. Um, we would say chapter number and um, 
how to use text frames as our chapter title. All right. And then we would, you know, insert chapter two. We would make that page number. How to use InDesign would be our chapter title. And then in the very back text frame is our back matter about the author. We would make that other title. So then I would place all the back matter content in the back matter text frame. Now you could keep it in the main text flow if you want, but like I said, I plan on using docs flow to help my authors update their back matter to make it easier. Um, so I am going to start including it in a separate text frame. So now that we kind of have a very basic document, um, it, the document consists of, well, here's, a, here's just a place graphic on this page. It's not really its own text frame. It's just a place graphic. This is a place graphic plus one text frame with the author name. But the main front matter text frame starts here. And of course, all this front matter stuff would need to be reworked. Like I would delete this out for the ebook, and I would do this as a single image for the ebook, a single image uh, title page. Um, and then I would wind up deleting this out, but I would make sure that I copy and pasted the, because uh, when I delete this out, let me show you, when I delete this out, that information goes away, okay? Because these are text variables. So you would need to actually copy and paste it without the text variable if you decided to delete that page out or the ebook can go with a title page that is a graphic. So that's just something to note. Um, you could always, all right, so we have, going back to that, our first major text frame is it includes the title page, uh, the text only title page is the right way to say that. And then the copyright page, then here we have a dedication, then an acknowledgments, and then that text frame ends after acknowledgments. Then we have a table of contents here, which we'll update in a minute. Then we have a table, uh, I'm sorry, we have another text frame app that we added after the table of contents. So we have the note to reader, a note from the editor, a forward. And that ends here, so we can see this by this, this uh, little square that is clear. That means the text frame has ended and it's not linked further. Here is where the bulk of the book will be. So here's chapter one and you'll see it continues and it ends right here. Um, and then here's our back matter, which ends right here. So now that we have all this information in, we can go to the table of contents and we can update it. All right, so it puts all of those um, details in our table of contents. However, we may not want the dedication and the acknowledgements in the table of contents. We only want anything after the table of contents to be included. So in that case, what I typically do is create a new paragraph style. I call the pair, based on other titles, I call it other titles, no TOC. I make sure it's applied to any uh, other title that we don't want in the table of contents. And then we go back to the table of contents and we update the table of contents. And so now those go away, all right? So I hope that helps. Um, let me pull up Cheryl's question again. Um, I've been practicing with the template keep running where I add more pages to the front matter than what's in your base template. So like I mentioned, you can do that a couple of different ways. You can actually just go to the table of contents, um, I'm sorry, the copyright page and insert, let's say here is the copyright page. You can insert a page after and just start a new text frame or you can go to the very end of the copyright page. You can actually start typing and it will go to the next page. Um, you know, hit your, hit, insert a page break, start typing or paste the front matter contents there um, and it will continue that text frame on the following page. You will just need to set your styles and set your master pages properly. All right, then the, let's see. So we answered that question. 
Um, and yeah, you can definitely customize your template however you want um, and delete out what you don't want. Um, you can uh, definitely do that. It's yours to customize however you want. Um, I typically just will paste that information directly from the client's job, just like this, where I insert it. Um, and then I just style it and set master pages as I go. I find that the easiest way to do it. Um, and then she, I've needed to delete the table of contents page a time or two. Um, so to delete the pay table of contents, what you would do is you would go into that table of contents text frame and hit the delete key. Um, and then you would hit, you would delete that page out. Okay, that's the table of contents needs to be deleted two ways. You need to delete the text frame and then the page in order to delete it out. If you just actually selected the page that the table of contents was on, so let's say you wanted to delete this page. In some cases, if the table of contents is linked to the next page, it will not delete. In this case, it was only that one page, so it did delete. So let me show you an example here. Let's say here. All right, so let's say you deleted it out. We're going to delete it out here. That didn't do anything. Why? Because the table of contents continued on another page. So it continued to reflow itself anytime we tried to delete that page. So the proper way would be to select everything in the table of contents text frame and then delete that page and it'll go away. Now, I typically do not delete out the table of contents. Um, when I'm doing a novel, I like to keep it in even for the print version during my draft stages. So a lot of times on my table of contents page, just um, when I send it to a client, I will say for ebook purposes only will be deleted in final print ready PDF. All right, so that is my trigger to myself that I don't want to delete this out for the because of the ebook, but I need to delete it out for that final print ready PDF that I send to my client. So once my client has approved the print draft, I go ahead and save it as a, an ebook. I save it as an ebook, just the file name. And then I will open that last draft of the print version. I will open up the table of contents page. I will delete it. And then I will save it as a final um, print ready for the client and then create the PDF on that final version. Um, the reason now you can easily delete the table of contents. And then when you get to the ebook, you can insert it back because the table of contents data is already there. So let's see. All right, so the table of contents data is already there. So let's say you did delete it out, but you wanted to reinsert it when you got to the ebook. So what you would need to do is go to the end of the text frame, the last uh, text frame you, where you would need to insert it. So if you don't want the dedication or the acknowledgments in the table of contents, you would go after those. But if you do want those, you would need to put, you would need to put the dedication and acknowledgments after the table of contents. So we would select these and move them. So now the dedication and the table of contents is part of that other text frame. Um, and then we would put in the table of contents here. So we would actually delete this. So the copyright page ended here, copyright text frame ended here, and then we could go in and insert a new page after the copyright page, and we would place our table of contents in this text frame. And uh, the, the table of contents is already set up now, what happened? We'll fix that in a minute. I know what happened. The table of contents is already set up. So you, unless you need to add or take away some fields in the table of contents, um, you don't have to do too much work um, to it.
So now you're, you're looking at this and this is all wrong. Something happened really funny and we now want the dedication and the acknowledgements to be included on the table of contents. So we're just gonna change that dedication title to other titles, acknowledgement to other titles, and then this is why a note to reader and that one paragraph came through because this is assigned as other titles. And that's just because I pasted it incorrectly. And so now when we update our table of contents, all that information is included again. All right, so I hope that helps. Um, let's see, uh, last part of Sherry's uh, question is also in breaking things when I need the copyright page in a different spot of the front matter than where it is currently in the template. So if I need to dump something on the front of it, it shifts that page. You can, you can just go in and you can insert pages before and not include them in that text frame. Or like I said, you can just reassign the master pages. Um, so this would be C and then you would just shift the vertical justification to the bottom. All right, so I hope that helps. Um, if you have any questions or need clarification, just let me know.